So today, my, ti- my message is titled, Beyond the Grave. Because most of us don't think beyond the grave. We only think to the grave. And most of us don't even think to the grave. We think today. But there's a life after the grave. There's another life. So I'm going to show you what will happen when you die. And the Bible says to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. So guess what? The moment you close your eyes, when you open your eyes, you're in heaven or hell. I can tell you the truth. There is nothing like that. If you sleep dirty, will you wake up clean? So what makes you think that when you die before receiving Christ, you will wake up having received Christ? It's a lie. When you sleep dirty, full of sin, you wake up dirty, full of sin. So what will happen when you die? Number one. When you die, you will either go to heaven or hell. When you die, you will either go to heaven or hell. Luke 22, the Bible says, So it was that the beggar died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. Abraham is in heaven. Mm -hmm. And the rich man also died and was buried. Uh 23. And being in torments, in heads. Heads is hell. New Living Translation. Heads is hell. So the rich man died. By the way, many rich people will go to hell. The Bible says it is more difficult for a rich man to enter heaven than a poor person. As it is difficult for a camel to enter into the eye of the needle. So is it for a rich person to enter heaven? Because most rich people think that their wealth is their way out. They think they can buy out anything. But as for you, you shall be rich people who will enter heaven. Amen. You will not be rich people who will go to hell. Amen. And being in torment, and in hell, he lift up his eyes. And being in torment, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. So one day, you will die. And when you die, you will either go to heaven or hell. That's the Bible say, and Lazarus died, and he went to purgatory to wait for his judgment. Talk to me. Does the Bible say that? Does the Bible say, and, and the rich man died, and he went to purgatory to wait for his judgment? What does the Bible say? Lazarus died and went to? And the rich man died and went to? So there are only two destinations after life. Either hell or heaven. Whether you like it or not, one day you will die. And when you die, you will either go to heaven or hell. The life you are living now dictates whether you go to heaven or hell. If you go to heaven, when you die, angels will come and escort you and carry you away from this earth into the presence of God. Verse 22 says, And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by angels into Abraham's bosom. Abraham is in the presence of God. So when you die as a believer headed to heaven, angels come and escort you to heaven. So this is what happened to Lazarus. So guess what? Expect it to happen to you. If you go to hell, when you die, you will be met on arrival by evil spirits and other dead people. Isaiah 14 verse 9. Pastor, you have to give us scriptures. We don't believe anything that is not in the Bible. I knew that. That's why I went looking for scriptures. Can we read this on the screen? Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet. Ah, well, give us looking, James. What is this? This guy is giving us teeth thou. You are even scaring us more. Are you not being scared more? Mm-hmm. Can we read? Hell is done what? They are dancing. They are saying, Teluja is coming. Jokola is coming. That's Lequin. Eh? What's Lequin? Wait. What are you doing? The Lequin is at Ingiza Apple. We are waiting. Uh-huh. Let's continue reading. Wait, it is stars what? So when the dead people are stirred up, I'm Kenny. When I church, guy, nanya na kuja, nanya na kuja kesho. You see how you are excited when you are traveling? There's an excitement you have. You're asking when will I start arriving? Like tomorrow, we are excited. Those who are going, we can't sleep, my friend. We are asking when are we going to leave this country? Nani apa? We pack and pack, we pack and pack. Hey, 
We are asking, when will we get there? So hell is exactly the same way. They are saying, we've been waiting for Monica. Mona Afiki. Then they are told, Monica is on the way coming. Hey, let's stop, everybody. Stop. Everybody, stand up. And the dead people and the chief ones on the earth, the chief one means the leaders on the earth, you won't be surprised to find dead presidents in hell if they, if they never knew Jesus. Don't be surprised when you get there. Perhaps, I'm just saying perhaps, if Jomo Kenyatta never knew Jesus, you might find him in hell. If Komen Kruma never knew Jesus, you might find him in hell. If Julius Nerara never knew Jesus, you might find him in hell. Why? Idi Amin! Uh, he's not yet dead. <laughs> Hitler! You might find him in hell. Idi Amin Dada! Yeah, you might be in hell. All the chief ones of the earth were in hell. And they were stirred up awaiting your arrival. So your arrival is met by dead people and evil spirits. At the runway, they are waiting for you. When they, they just touch down like this, and don't think that the plane to hell is comfortable. Eh? Don't have that picture of Boeing. Eh? No. Have a picture of, you see those planes that people have been trying to make? Like Kisumu, you see that guy was trying to make a plane. Have that picture in mind now. It can't even fly for long. And it, look, the landing is not smooth landing. It is a put At to say. Tell your neighbor, 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 on arrival to hell, you'll be met by dead people and evil spirits. When you die, you will go downwards if you're going to hell. Now, that question has answered where hell is. When you die, you will go downwards if you are going to hell. The scripture we just read. Hell from where? Check on the screen. Hell from where? Hell from where? Where is beneath? Where is beneath? Below, right? Down. So when you die, if you are going to hell, get ready to go down. Hell is below. Hell is beneath us. The scripture is very clear. It says, hell from beneath is moved for thee. That is why the rich man in hell lifted up his eyes trying to look at Lazarus who was above. Where do you lift your eyes from? Do you lift your eyes from above or from below? When you die, you will discover that you have a spiritual body. Which the Bible refers to as the inward man. Get ready. You've not been preparing your inner man. So very soon, demons will be saying, to whom to? To whom for? To whom do they belong to? To whom to? Then the devil, Satan will say, it's on his angle, it's on my things. Those are my fundamentals, it's on my things. Those are my fundamentals, and those are my things. Those are my fundamentals, eh? Very soon, I'm telling you. Very soon, prepare yourself. Because you've not taken care of your inward man. If you're here, by now you should be saying, uh, today, I'm receiving Christ. Today, now, now, now. Don't make me continue preaching. By now you should be saying, Pastor, I want to receive Jesus. If this is what will happen when you die, do you realize how painful this will be? You will realize that you have another body that you never took care of. So perhaps, young man, your outward body is 90 kg, but your inward man is 1 kg. 24. And he cried and said, Father Abraham! Do you cry with your... What do you cry with? What do you cry with? <laughs> you cry with both your eyes and your mouth. Nobody... Okay, there are others who just cry with your eyes and they don't produce sound. But me, I know most people, they cry with their eyes and they produce sound with their mouth. So that is to mean he had eyes and the mouth. So that he had, if you have eyes and mouth, it means you have the complete body. You want to tell me your mouth is on your legs? Or your eyes are on your bam bam? They are on your head, right? If you have a head, you have a mouth. Or have you seen someone who has a head with no mouth? That's an anomaly. It's not possible, eh? Unless of supernatural zombies, eh? <laughs> zombies. Are you a zombie, my friend? <laughs> he's saying zombies. Is he a zombie? So he said, and he cried and said, Father Abraham! Have mercy on me and sell Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger. So Lazarus had a finger and he was dead. Senior, uh -huh. let's continue reading. And dip, dip the finger in the water 
and cool by so the rich man had and he was let's keep reading for I am tormented in that is to tell you you have a need one man that has everything that the outward man has so the same way you take care of your outward man take care of your inward man the Bible says physical exercise is good but it is not profitable compared to spiritual exercise it's in the book of Timothy Spiritual exercise is prayer and fasting, reading the word of God, preparing your soul to meet its maker. Because your soul has a maker. And your soul will be recalled one day by the maker. Number six. If you go to hell, when you die, you'll find yourself in prison. Where there is endless, imaginable, unimaginable distress and torment. So in hell, there is a worm that does not die. And there is a fire that is never quenched. Let me give you a scripture. Mark 9, 43 to 44. The Bible says, And if thy hand of thee, cut it off, it is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands and go into hell and into the fire that shall never be quenched, where the worm does not do what? Hell was created for the devil. But anybody who will not listen to God will be together with the devil. Because if you don't listen to God, Jesus said, you are, you are of your father, the devil. So you have to go where your father is. So you will be in a prison full of endless pain and agony. Number seven. If you go to hell when you die, you will discover a place where people scream and cry for a drop of water. If a drop of water makes the difference in hell, how painful will hell be? If you go to hell when you die, you will discover a place of imaginable, indescribable anguish and torment. Unbelievable and indescribable are the words to describe the anguish in hell. Unbelievable, indescribable. When you die, you will discover that many people who received good things on earth will receive evil things in hell. When you die, you will discover that many people who received good things on earth we receive evil things in hell. And many people who received evil things on earth will receive good things in heaven. The measure of, eh, the, measure of the fun you had, you'll get a, deep, a double measure of it in hell. As for those who look like fools, they used to come to church and say, Lord, come into my heart. I just want to live a good life. A life that makes you happy. A life that honors you. I want to live a pure life. A life that honors you. God will say, now, because you receive bad things on earth, I'm going to give you good things in heaven. Many of those who suffered on earth will receive good things. And many of those who enjoyed and received good things on earth will receive evil things. When you die, you will discover that the first shall be last and last shall be first. When you die, you will discover that the first shall be last and last shall be first. Those who look like they had nothing happening in their lives will be fast. In heaven, the poor man was in a better place than the rich man. That means the poor man became fast and the rich man became last. There was a complete reversal of status. The rich man was down, down, down. The rich and, 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 and man was now powerless, useless and suffering below. The rich man was asking for water. Just water, a drop. And I'm so sure in his, home, in, in his compound he had a borehole. Even not a borehole, he had a well. But he was asking for just a drop. Because the first shall be last. There is a reversal of status. Those who are now clapping and doing good, eh? You think you are happening. When your kusema shule enu. Hey, get ready. A time is coming. That's why I watch you. I say, oh, you don't know what you're doing. I keep watching you. Take your time. Enjoy your life. But you never know when death is coming. The Bible says we are just a step away from death. The rich man needed help. And the poor man was comforted. The rich man was crying out out of his pain and need. But do you remember all the things that were happening to the poor man on earth? On earth, the poor man was down, down, down. Needing help. Needing water. Needing food. On earth, the poor man was powerless as he suffered and cried out of pain for his souls. But in heaven, the rich man was comforted. The poor man was comforted. His souls were healed. He was no longer in pain. He was no longer in torment. He was in a better place. 
But for you that have been enjoying life, the reverse is true. You will be in a place of pain, a place of agony, the place of pain. So the words of Jesus are true. The Bible says that in the last days, the last shall be first, and the first shall be last. These words are true. These words are sincere. These words don't fall to the ground. The last shall be first, and the first shall be last.